Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello, student. Welcome to the, to the TV learning programs. I'm Teacher Hubbard. As uh, my names, I'll be taking you through the Barrage and Heresy Science of Senior 2, Unit 3. And the unit three is concerning about passive movement of substances across the cell membrane. So that is the unit we're going to discuss today with you, unit three, unit three, which is concerning about the passive movement of substances substances, substances across the cell, cell membrane. So, student, welcome to the lesson of today, which is concerning about passive movement of substances across the cell membrane. So, before we start our lesson, I will come you all to the lesson of today. But before we start our lesson, I would like everybody to get a pen, an exercise book, a notebook, and you note some important concept and important word I'm going to be mentioning in the unit. So, student, let's, let's start. As you know that our body is made up of cells that carry out several metabolic and uh, physiological processes, and in order to carry the life processes of life. So our, our cells, they have to carry out metabolic processes, physiological processes, in order for a cell to survive. And a cell has to be provided with very many materials if a cell is to survive. So these nutrients, they can just move into or out of the cell by passive process or by active processes. So I am going to tell you that we can say uh, in various substances, some of which waste products can just be removed from the body, and I can say, and other products are, and other useful substances can also enter into our body. The useful substances are transferred to cells where they need for important metabolic processes. Therefore, substances always move into and out of the cell by using these passive processes or active processes. And you can say the way substances move into and out of the cell depends on certain properties. You can talk about the size of the, of the particle. You can talk about the distances and ETC and ETC. And you know, when I talk about the plasma membrane, a plasma membrane, sometimes the plasma membrane is called a selective permeable membrane. All right? You can say plasma membrane. Let me talk about that. Plasma membrane. Or... Oh, Cell membrane. Cell membrane is selectively permeable. Is selectively permeable. If I say selectively permeable, uh, it means it means that it can control. It means that it can control. The entry of substance of substances and out of the body. All right? You can say here is a list of the passive processes. Examples of passive processes that occurs in our body. Passive processes. If I say passive processes. Let me say passive transport or passive, passive, passive transport. If I said, what is passive transport? Who can define for me what is a passive transport? What do you understand by passive transport? In biology, when I say passive transport, it means the movement of molecules along an electronic gradient does not require energy. Okay? So it does not require energy. There is no production of energy. All right? Here is the definition. Take the definition. You can say... It, uh, it involves the movement 
of molecules, can talk about molecules or ions, stroke ions, along the along along you can say along electronic gradient, electronic electrochemical gradient with without the use of ATP. If I say ATP, most of you can ask yourself what is ATP? It is adrenosine triphosphate. If I say adrenosine triphosphate, it means when you get a diphosphate plus another phosphate, you get a triphosphate ATP. So that is energy production that is going to be produced. And you can say down, down, downhill, downhill transport, downhill transport, downhill transport, okay? That is downhill transport. Examples, we can have examples of active transport, examples of, of passive transport, examples of passive transports, Examples of passive transports, we have one, we have diffusion. We have number two, which is osmosis. Osmosis. Then three, we have facilitated, facilitated a diffusion. All right. When they talk about uh, these processes, we talked about passive movement. It, is a, it involves the movement of molecules or ions or particles or gases along electronic gradient with the use, without the use of ATP. They don't use ATP. They don't use energy. That's a, that form of energy called it to be adrenosine triphosphate. Uh, and I said when you get a diphosphate, when you get a diphosphate plus one phosphate group, Diphosphate. If you get a diphosphate plus another phosphate, you get what you call a triphosphate. Okay? A diphosphate plus another phosphate, you get what you call a triphosphate. Examples of passive transports, we have diffusion, we have osmosis, we have facilitated diffusion. Still, and let's, start, let's start with the diffusion. Number one, let's start with diffusion. Diffusion is an example of passive, of passive transport. If I say passive transport, that one means the movement of molecules or ions or gases, they don't require energy. Okay? They move from higher concentration to lower concentration. Let me just use an example of uh, diffusion. I have something you can see. I have, a, let me say, this is a deodorant or a perfume. If you say a deodorant from in your room, it sprays from one region to another region. There's two differences in regions. It has moved from higher concentration to lower concentration. That is an example of diffusion. Spraying a deodorant in your room is an example of diffusion. Let me also use another example. I will be having water. And I add, if I get water, this is water. And then I add uh, potassium permanganate. As an example, I add the crystals of potassium permanganate. If you add the potassium permanganate in water, what will happen? I get the crystals of potassium permanganate. If I get the crystals, these are crystals of potassium permanganate. If I get these crystals of potassium permanganate and I put it into water, you can see they are going to dissolve. They are going to dissolve. The color will just reach to the, yeah, they will just reach to what you call uniformly distributed. Uniformly distributed. It will move from higher concentration to lower concentration. What does it mean? We are, going to get a, we are going to get the definition of diffusion. So here you can see the potassium permanganate is moving from higher concentration to lower concentration across the concentration gradient. All right? So when you spread a uh, deodorant in your room, then in, the, in, a few, in a few minutes or in a few times, in a few seconds, in the room, the whole of the room will be sprayed with a deodorant. What does it mean? It means moves for the, the deodorant will just move from higher concentration to lower concentration. Here is the definition of, of uh, diffusion. Get the definition. Definition. 
the it is the net movement net movement of particles or particles that's the we have ions we have molecules we have gases from a region of higher higher concentration to a region of lower of raw concentration down down the concentration gradient down the concentration concentration gradient if i say down the concentration gradient what does it mean what do you understand by concentration gradient what is what is concentration gradient what is concentration gradient concentration gradient refers refers to the differences differences in concentration in concentration let me just say maybe an example i have a box the box i have which is a partially it is a selectively permeable it is selectively permeable on one side i can say on one side i have more more solutes this one indicates the solutes all right there are more solutes there are more solutes here there are more solutes on that region i can call it to be this is a and this is b these are more solutes and here there is less water there is less water on that side on b i have less solutes in number compared to a if you are trying to see there are more solutes on that side but there is more water here on that side now the solute will move from high concentration and they doze with water dozing with water dozing with water what will happen they will move from higher concentration to lower concentration meaning that a is higher concentrated than b is a, is a lower concentrated but they are going to move from a concentration gradient where there is a differences between two regions there is a difference in concentration between a and b a has got high concentration and then b has got lower concentration good let's talk about you can say after moving we can say you can also add something you can say as a result as a result of who? random movement random movement you can say it is the net movement of particles or ions or molecules or gases from a region of higher concentration